Heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua is one of the most accomplished fighters alive today. After taking home a gold medal in the Olympics, Joshua next earned three of the four major heavyweight belts in dramatic fashion, garnering an 88% knockout rate along the way. He's also the first champion to ever post video of himself watching my videos. So, you know, no pressure. Moving on, Joshua is currently looking to take the fourth belt to become undisputed heavyweight champion. Standing in his way is Tyson Fury. But while Fury has been lauded for his ring craft and Wilder for his raw power, Joshua has been shoehorned by many as the guy who's simply naturally gifted. Any champion will have gifted genetics in some way, and Joshua, with his physique and athletic skills, is no exception. But this is only a small part of the equation. Joshua is in fact a great boxer, and in particular, he's a nuanced and highly creative counterpuncher. While you may have seen highlights of Joshua beating up on opponents against the ropes to finish fights, the whole reason they're on the ropes in the first place is that Joshua already damaged them enough to put them there, and he did this with high-level counters. Joshua's size and reach makes him ideal to defend and then return counters from long range. But instead, Joshua usually takes the exact opposite and far riskier approach. Joshua prefers to intercept an opponent's punch as he's throwing, stepping in deeper and taking the tighter path down the center line. The center line is the imaginary line that runs down a fighter's body, and if two boxers are throwing at the same time, the one whose punch more closely follows the center line will always hit first. We can see a simple version of this principle when Joshua intercepts a cross with a jab, or a jab with a cross. Only it's not so simple, as Joshua must adjust his position through head movement and footwork in real time as the punch is coming at him. This both avoids his opponent's punch, and aligns Joshua's own punch down the center line. A big part of this is also proper punch selection. For instance, a cross will always take a tighter path down the center line than a hook. But this particular counter is so devastating to Joshua's opponents because he steps and slips inside as he throws. This not only tightens the angle, but puts far more power into his punch. A cross to counter a hook is boxing 101. However, Due to his footwork and head movement, Joshua can use non-traditional counters that usually should not work to great effect. For instance, Joshua will often counter a cross or overhand with a hook or uppercut. Since a hook takes a much longer path to its target than a cross, Joshua must use footwork and head movement to cheat his punches closer to the center line. He can step inside to allow his opponent's right to sail past him and then pivot to shorten the distance of his own punch. Pivoting is a highly underutilized method when it comes to countering. Know how when Joshua throws a hook at the same time as his opponent, that it's his pivot that both moves his head out of the line of fire and shortens the path of his own punch. But the most impressive counter that Joshua regularly pulls off is to split his opponent's jab with a lead hook. Splitting an opponent's jab with the left is difficult enough from southpaw, but at least in that instance, the right foot being in front allows more possibilities to create angles. But like Frazier, Joshua uses outside head movement from orthodox to successfully land this rare counter. There's a reason this counter is usually best for shorter fighters like Frazier. It can turn their lead hook into more of an overhand. But once again, Joshua uses his superior reach in unexpected ways slipping, and then pivoting instead. Aside from counters, Joshua is great at finding creative angles for his punches in general. After all, counters don't mean much if you can't take advantage of a hurt opponent and finish the fight. Something Joshua truly excels at is stepping around opponents to align his punches through the cracks in their guard. For instance, he can sidestep to align his shoulder with their center line in order to slip an uppercut up the middle. But beyond this, is the ability to alter the path of his punches in an instant that makes Joshua such a great fighter. Note here how Joshua's opponent tries to stay safe by crouching and cross-blocking. Rather than throw blindly, 
Joshua both tracks his opponent's head movement and angles his own punch to hit the small opening between his opponent's arm and shoulder. Joshua does the same on the lead side by corkscrewing his right. Like a batter who can still connect with curveballs, Joshua can adjust to find his target in the blink of an eye. And just like the pro baseball player, this is much harder than it seems, requiring years of practice. But honestly, perhaps the most impressive attribute about Joshua is his ability to constantly adapt and grow with each fight. Joshua suffered a TKO loss in his first fight against Andy Ruiz, an outcome that surprised nearly everybody. Although Joshua was able to use his close range counterpunching to knock Ruiz down in the second, Ruiz soon showed his own ability to counter when Joshua tried to finish him off. Throughout the fight, Ruiz negated Joshua's reach by stepping outside and cross elbow blocking Joshua's jab. He then used masterful head movement and punch selection to counter Joshua. But in their second fight, Joshua completely changed up his strategy. He now circled and pivoted as he jabbed, stepping deep inside to open up angles against Ruiz. This stopped the new champion from closing the door on Joshua's jabs. With Joshua able to maintain the distance, Ruiz was forced to attack from long range. With this, Joshua could now use his superior reach to counter, coasting to an easy victory. The question on everyone's mind right now is how Joshua will fare against the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. The two are both incredibly talented British giants, and both hold a claim to a piece of the undisputed heavyweight title. Let everyone know who you think will win in the comments. If you want to up your own game, you can check out my books on footwork, defense, and power, linked below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.